will donate property, uh, whatever you want, we'll, we'll do. The developer that put in Bass Pro Shops, he's there, saying, tell us what we can do better, and we'll do it. I've never seen them like that. Um, so they have been successful doing that. Um, but then there's other examples. I, we just had a project at White Creek in Fairhope that was terminated uh, because the major landowner said, I'm not going to cooperate. You're not going to come on my property to monitor. I'm not going to do anything you tell me. And so we just, we're, we're not regulatory, so we don't have to fight those fights that Missy, that, that they have to fight. Not me. So we'd rather just throw away than fight fight. But, uh, uh, but I, think you, I think we're obligated to try to educate. And then, then you get to get people on your side. They know you're doing <coughs> But I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, um, everything you do in these watersheds is expensive. So I think it's all prioritization. You know, you've got to prioritize. You've got to um, And then if you can have one, one success, um, I think people really see that. People travel roads and they, and they see the stream. So I think it, it really goes a long way if you can have some success. What, what, um, where are you at? right now in, in the watershed? Are you still assessing the watershed or are you doing any remediation or where is this group at? Right well the swamp project has placed a lot of um, on the ground BMPs but we were just talking and strategizing this morning. This camera just went dead so I switched over to this camera here. But uh, and. Uh, the first three years of this implementation of swamp has been somewhat shotgun. You know, for one thing, it's just exactly what Johnny and you just touched on. You have to work with folks that will work with you. And so we had a lot of effort uh, gone to different landowners um, and uh, putting uh, effort into trying to educate them and trying to work with them and not being able to work with them. Uh, but we have done uh, work with a lot of high visibility areas like uh, uh, schools and uh, different public parks and subdivisions and uh, so we have we've got three years of on the ground uh, BMPs uh, in place and uh, and a lot of outreach and education so I think we've got a, a very good solid base that we're working from uh, Interestingly, the, the rural areas in the lower half of the Saugahatchee have been the most challenging. Um, when you walk up to the porch and they pull out the double barrel shotgun, you know, you may not be able to do anything with those How folks. Much ag do you have in that not really that much agriculture, very, very little row crop. So you and can't, can't get into the farm bill. The farm bill. The farm bill doesn't do anything unless it gives an incentive to do it. That's what I found about the farm bill. And so, mm -hmm. uh, the farm bill, folks like the farm bill. Uh, mm -hmm. And a lot of these watersheds, the reason they've been able to do things is because they had some incentives to be able to offer landowners. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to really help. Yeah, of course. Well, I was going to say, and also the emergency watershed protection with NRCS helps. I know Wallen County address a lot of the erosion mm -hmm. and the dirt erosion that this is. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys are aware of that and take me so. Yeah, I was just going to say, like you were saying, there's not a whole lot of row crop type agricultural like we have down there. So it, it's not that, you know, they're looking at it all the time. There is some areas where you have cattle and creek and, and dirt roads, but most of your you know, nutrients, like you say, are coming from the headwaters, and we've been looking at it on that 10-digit scale, which is huge. Yeah. And so, and that's what we're looking on the, the next phase of it. It's just going to those smaller watersheds that they've done monitoring and seeing where we, what areas we need to really target, and starting at the headwaters. And I know it seems <laughs> every every one of these do, but if you don't do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's the key is uh, I don't think governments are adverse to doing things. It's just <clears throat> seems fairly simple here that we just implement these interventions and we have success and it's just the mechanism of how we get that all set up is quite a 
challenge. And of course, with Swamp, it makes it somewhat easier because uh, they've got they've got name recognition now. People understand more about what they're doing, and so maybe the, the logical place for us is to do some things with them, which is what we've talked about. And uh, you know, setting up a, a demonstration, for example, somewhere along the side hatch, and I can think of several good places that we might do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, anywhere you've got a dirt road, <coughs> what they're clamoring for more than anything is they want to pay. But paving doesn't automatically solve all these issues. It, it certainly leads to it, but we uh, we can't maintain the paved roads we have. And so it's kind of hard for some of us to get our arms around the fact that we want to continue paving roads that we can't maintain in the future. And, and that poses just as many problems in other areas as, as this does. So, What's your feel as far as uh, what the major impact is? Do you think the major impact is, is the road roads? Uh, actually, in my opinion, I think in, on Sockahatchee, but especially because it goes through numerous jurisdictions and counties, uh, in the headwaters area, I think the impact's more due to uh, the construction and the impervious services and those things. And then as you kind of get in the middle part of it, you start picking up the sediment issues, and then uh, it just exasperates the problem further down, down the stream going towards the lake. So, um, but again, that could... I'm like you, nature will correct itself if it's given a chance. And um, if we can, and we've done a good job on correcting some of those things, but the impervious services in areas like Auburn and Opelika are going to be difficult because of once they're there, they're there. And then it's just a matter of how can you manage the water flow? Is that going to be done with low head dams or other mechanisms? And then you bring other sedimentation issues in. And <laughs> Man's interventions aren't always the best. Let's put it like that. Yeah. But, I, but I, I'm very encouraged that we can find a way to uh, piecemeal do some of these things. And I think it, for, for us politically, if we do one in uh, each different area of the county, that more people can see the benefit to it, then it's a certain type of benefit to do it that way and, and, um, and slowly go about doing these things. Justin is one of our county engineers, and every time we go to one of his meetings, he cringes because he's kind of curious as to what his next project might be. <laughs> <laughs> and, and where we might end up spending money is that we really probably need to direct in other areas based on other people's perceptions and needs. So, mm -hmm. well, you, yeah. you know, something just hit me. Uh, one thing that all of the streams that, I, that I've showed, shown you that where we had these major impacts, the one thing that they all have in common is they're very small watersheds. I think it just it, it looks like confusion and chaos when you look at a large watershed and how can we correct this thing. Where I think it's much much clearer and much more concise if you can do small things, you know, start out with the small things. So. Well, the, the salt hedge watershed is, is large compared to some of the streams, <coughs> but it's made up of a lot of sub watersheds that right. we're talking about. Small projects can make a big difference. Yes. Just like you know, the, the uh, Chihuahua watershed. You know, so it, all these little things can make a big difference. I'd be willing to guess that closing that road that went through the park and went down that old steel bridge when they finally closed that and cut all the traffic off of it. And it kind of stabilized itself. That probably dramatically reduced the amount of inputs into that creek at that point, um, simply because of the fact that it wasn't graded and, and the debris kept moving this point. So. Mara, as I listen to, to this discussion and everything, I'm thinking if this, this group might be interested in a, it's almost still available to summarize the work that has been done from the USDA sedimentation lab in Oxford, Michigan. And everything because I, I can't think of a single group that's done more work in, in relation to the different things that can dissipate the energy relationships associated with erosion, sediment transport, deposition process, different things of that, <coughs> that, that group. And the thing about the my experience with the sedimentation lab is that they they don't shy away from large streams. I mean, they have um, they have things that that they can do in. In the Mississippi River, I mean, they they are experts in, in these issues, and they don't uh, magnitude doesn't seem to affect them. So that that 
may be, and I know that uh, that those guys over there, they would be, they would love to come down and talk to you. That would be, that might be yeah. the well, They have a research group, plus they have the RCS people there at that lab too, so they're staying up on all the stuff and all the research stuff. So, I mean, I, the people I worked with in years ago, they're all dead or retired now, so I don't know who would be a good contact. <laughs> Well, the Clean Water Project is still alive. We'll have a say on it. One of the major projects that the Clean Water Project has taken on the past three or four years has been with the sanitation lab on the uh, impacts on the Tim Tom Water Road. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of that river folks are losing their land, and so they had uh, contracted with, uh, uh, with uh, the National Sanitation Lab to evaluate that and to give them some guidance. Mm -hmm. And they, I think they've done a really good job. Allison or any of those folks, they would know exactly who to talk to. Well, they've got a good answer for that issue. They just bring a bigger riprap and put on the I just had one comment when you were talking about that, or and Johnny mentioned the prioritization, and you were talking hilltop to hilltop. That's what struck me when I read your report was, uh, especially on dirt roads, uh, county roads, you, don't, you may not have to look at 15, 20 mile section of the road. You need to concentrate on just that hilltop to hilltop where the bridge is. And that could cut down a huge amount of the sediment, just that short section of road coming down to the bridge. Is that basically correct? Yeah, that's what they did there, but uh, on Point Isle A Road, And, uh, and then the folks that live there, there's a number of people live on the past, you know, on the hill, on the flat area up there, and they wanted the whole thing paid. And the county said, okay, we'll we'll pay it if y'all will buy the materials. And I know you, I, you know, I wouldn't want to go to a taxpayer and say, how about buying some payment for me, but uh, they did it. And so they got the whole thing paid. And it's a really nice road. Now. Other than chips, there was the BMP reuse, and was it permanent or did they move them back to the chips? Or you know, everything, everything was permanent. They went on the street. There was only three that I know of. And that was the, they, they made sure that everything was vegetated. Um, they um, remediated the ditches, the slopes, and the bottom and all that. And then the chips. Were, you know, the owner of the ditch, because some of the pictures look like it was, it was rip wrap from, from the whole ditch, and then others look like it was. It was a series of check downs. Right. And I think that was, uh, if I remember right, it was, it depended on the, the gradient. Uh, I think they did on the really steep portions, I think they did the whole thing. And then when it was flatter, they did check downs. Well, thank y'all so much for inviting me. I hope I told you something that you didn't know. Or, uh,